My name is Coach Michael Burt, and I have a very basic premise. I believe everybody needs a coach in life. I like to do one of my favorite shows called Good Coach, Bad Coach, The Secrets of Great Coaches Know That the Other Coaches Never Figure Out. I believe a monster producer is a legendary creature that combines multiple skill sets to dominate a market. Coach Michael Burt, the super coach, every week coming into your life to multiply your life and your money and your business. As a coach, I hear so many excuses. And, and a part of me is, when I was an old basketball coach, and I was thinking about just the other day, I never tolerated excuses. I mean, never. I will not tolerate mediocrity. I won't tolerate it. I won't tolerate not taking ideas and seeing them through to their conclusion. I won't to tolerate me saying we should do this and this and it not being executed. I won't tolerate signing up people that don't need to be in the program. That particular morning, a customer had decided to opt out on us. He hadn't been engaged with what he's supposed to be doing. He didn't give us any indication. He's still playing at a very small level. And he, and he quit on us. And when people quit on me, man, when I pour as much time and energy in my heart, I mean, I spend a lot of time away from my family to pour into our customers. And when people quit on me and they haven't done their part, I really get pissed off about it, man. You know, I woke up pissed off <laughs> this morning. I'm a competitive guy. And we had a customer out of nowhere just call in and cancel on us yesterday. The couple of decisions came from that person quitting. One, I decided there would be no more cancellations. When you commit to something with me, you are in it. You know, you're in it for the year. Because I can't do my work in you if you go a couple months and quit. Most people quit at the six month mark. It's like starting wanting to lose weight but working out for three times and then quitting. And then saying the trainer didn't do his part, man. No, you got to do your freaking part, man. You got you got to do your part. I'm a former coach, and I remember staying up all night when we lost. And man, I just scrutinize everything. What did we do wrong? Why did we not do it? What did we not execute? But I also realize that when a person quits on something, it's a habit. It says more about them many times than it says about us. He didn't quit on me. The money I made up in, I literally made it up in five minutes. We sold one thing. I mean, I got on the phone and sold one person and made up all the money I lost in that person that quit on me. But I, I was irritated because this happens a lot. And I'm just, to the, I'm just to my limit in listening to excuses. People don't pay me to listen to excuses. They pay me to help them get better and tell them the truth. And that's what I'm gonna do from now on. Every now and then you need to get pissed off to get out of a complacent state. Every now and then you need to push people hard. Every now and then people get comfortable. You need to say, look, this ain't acceptable. We can't grow if we lose customers. Now, at the same time, what I would say to those people that quit is, is the easiest thing in the world to do is quit. You may be operating at a level, but I guarantee you I'm coaching somebody operating at a level much higher than you are. You know, we rotate Monster Producer every month because I think increase, increase supply and the demand will follow, right? Straight out of the movie, The Founder. Increase the supply and the demand. Well, I said I'm going to all these markets. I'm hitting Murfreesboro, Cool Springs, Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville. We didn't have the demand in those markets. I just said increase the supply and the demand will follow. And that's what's happening. So I've taken my little show on the road as a demonstrated capacity. I'm saying, man, I'm bringing it to your city, a city near you. If we can't get 40 people in there paying 400, then we need to get, we need to get new people on our team. Or I need to get better, okay? But we can get 40 people in a room paying 400 a month. That's 16,000 a session that I teach. If I do it twice in a day, it's 32,000 a day. And that's worth me to get out of bed because that brings in revenue for our company. Good morning. Today, I got Monster Producer, Cool Springs. I woke up a little ornery this morning, so man, I, I got some fire in me about not quitting and not, not giving up on your dreams. And I'm gonna hit my monsters first thing this morning on that. So I think you're gonna enjoy it. Stay with me today. I'm only looking for people looking for me. Monsters, legends, domination. Come on. I love working with monster producers. I love it. I love working with progressive-minded people who don't BS and have excuses. I love it. So, so that day we taught monster producer, that morning monster attraction. And just like a pastor that teaches the same sermon six or seven times, I get better every time. 
I was much better the second time than I was the first time, and I'll be better in Nashville than I was the first, and I'll be better in Knoxville and better in Chattanooga and because I've taught it so many times and I've seen what works and what doesn't work. So a monster producer, I taught, how do you attract large numbers of people to you? Not chasing, not one-to-one -one selling. How do you attract thousands of people to you? Because that's the business I'm in now. What they care about is what? Do you have something to say today that will get my attention and get the attention of other people? Okay? So I want to constantly ask you this today. Who cares about what you have to say? Especially if it's very vague and very basic and it don't matter. Who cares? Okay? Until you cultivate a consistent point of view, it don't matter. You're just selling a commodity and you're never going to sell it at very high levels until you can get it in front of more people. Okay? I'm a former coach. I think like a coach. I develop potential like a coach. I have an intensity like a coach, okay? And that's, I don't know where it comes from. I'd like to tell you that I know exactly maybe my upbringing, my background, my formative years, but I have a passion for coaching. And I believe a good coach can change your whole freaking life, okay? So I developed a program called Turn Your Managers Into Coaches. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is I don't want you to get the opportunity to get in front of a group of people and blow it because you don't know how to communicate effectively. This is part of being an executive. This is part of being a manager, a coach. Coaches are some of the greatest communicators in the world. If you've ever had a lousy manager, an ill-equipped manager, a young manager, somebody who has no idea how to develop talent, they need to be in managers to coaches. We get them to think like a coach, develop talent like a coach, build a culture like a coach, follow up like a coach. And that particular day I was teaching them how to share their message through conviction. How do you share a message that gets people excited? And that was what we covered in Managers to Coaches that day, it was young, green managers that want to be good, but man, they don't know yet what they're doing. They need a mentor, they need a coach, and that's what that program is. So when you use communication, you need to say, I think there's three things we can do to communicate better. You see what I'm saying? We need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. I notice that people are not following up on their emails until three days later. Let me tell you how it costs us. I notice that when you do communicate, you don't do this, this, and this. I believe one of the greatest competitive advantages a company can have is in their operations team. How they service what they've sold. If I'm going to go out there and overpromise. I got to over deliver. I hear too many people say under promise and over deliver. That's bull, man. Over promise and over deliver. Well, that's operations. Sadly, 95% of operations teams never get any coaching. They never get any attention. They're doing monotonous, boring jobs. They never get to see the customer. There's no feedback loop. There's no motivation. And nobody's coaching them. So with First Bank and other mortgage companies I'm working with, they are now seeing the light. We need to feed these people. I call it feeding the sheep. All right, we've had a great day today. Monster producer, and then we did managers to coaches with some, with some young managers. And now we're moving to work with an operations team uh, from First Bank. These are young, 20 to 30, mostly do not get a lot of personal development. And my job is to keep them motivated, see a bigger picture, give them some upward mobility, and get them thinking at a higher frequency. That's where we're headed next. You know, in the Bible, Jesus asked Peter three times after the resurrection, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And what did he ask him to do? Tend to my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, right? And I equate feeding the sheep with sheep need shepherds. They need tending. They're not very smart animals. They need a lot of attention, right? So I say feed them in the body, in the mind, in the heart, in the spirit. And so we fed those operations people. And that particular day, it was on a symphony of efficiency around the new movie, The Founder, uh, about Ray Kroc and McDonald's. Great session. Young kids just need to be fed. Now, what you're going to learn when you watch this movie that's a, that relates to you is McDonald's is just manufacturing a product through an assembly line that they sell. And what they're really selling is not how delicious the burgers taste or the fries, although the fries are pretty good. <laughs> What they're really selling is speed. So that particular day, we, we had some miscommunication about who was going to be doing accountability. Bill was coming back from Ohio, and he, just, he was supposed to be doing that, but he reached a dead cell area, and he couldn't do it. So I had to jump on accountability, and it was stressful because I got to get on an airplane to go to Minnesota, and I'm doing accountability, and we're trying to get the technology to work. I'm doing it on my phone, but we made a commitment to our customers that we would do accountability every week. So we did it. Some people have this problem. I don't have a good EOS. 
So when I'm getting in front of people, I don't have anything compelling to say. Because I don't have anything compelling to say, my close ratios are low, my confidence is low, and my energy is low. Look, here's what everybody says. I'm so busy. I'm so caught up. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so in the weeds. Look, man, it's happening to everybody. We are living in such an economic time that people have so much opportunities. There, there are jobs everywhere, and there's not enough people to work. Everybody's looking for people. Everybody's overwhelmed. I could use 10 more people right now on my staff. We can't hire them fast enough. Okay? If I can get you in that rhythm, then we're going to be in very good shape, okay? But listen, having something to say is just as valuable as having somebody to say it to. So if I don't have a good EOS, and I don't have a hit list, I'm just out there in the world floundering around, right? End of the day wasn't end of the day, because I had to fly to Minnesota. I go to Minnesota once a month, twice a month, to work with a company called Home Buyers Marketing. Had a great day, hectic day, and I got to catch a flight to Minnesota. So I got my warm clothes, just in case. Got my bags. We got a lot of people to impact, so hope you have a great day out there, guys. Because that's what I am, man. I'm a grinder. I see my work as my calling. And it ain't gonna be easy. And sometimes I gotta show up when I don't feel like it. And that's what I encourage people I'm coaching to do. Show up, dress up, show up, paint up, spray up, pretty up, and deliver. Because that's what you're getting paid to do.